how has the COVID-19 increased the data protection challenges of the enterprises? What are the imminent challenges you see in the data management in the current circumstances? Great question, Kalpana. Look, I think uh, I, I see it in two phases, right? Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about it from a macro perspective and then hand off to Anthony to talk about what the demands are from a technology perspective. But initially when COVID hit, most companies were like, okay, I need to be able to get access to my employees as they work from remote uh, areas and give them that access as quickly as possible. And then from a technology standpoint, we kind of saw this period where it was, let's wait and see what's happening with the rest of the world. Uh, and hopefully this goes away for a short period of time. And then we go back to driving our digital transformation uh, uh, you know, endeavors. What has happened over time is when you look at it, um, the COVID thing has stayed with us for you know a good part of almost two years now, if you really think about it. And as that process continues, uh, companies are now forced to drive the digital transformation as part of you know keeping close to their customers. The workplace has been decentralized, and that's a guarantee, and it will, it will never change. That will change forever. And so the demands on customers to be able to not only get access to their customers, but back up that data as it's sprawled across multiple locations is is a number one priority. And then the second was when I look at that DPR report we, we published recently, 90% of customers are making that move to cloud as an impact of COVID. Uh, and so what we see is you know massive movement of workloads and innovation towards cloud technologies, maybe touch on Kubernetes a little bit, uh, which really changes the landscape. As they drive these innovations, the requirement from them is to work with us and companies like us to help drive those backup uh, solutions to protect that data as they try and drive that transformation, which has been spurred on in a, in a, in a sense by, by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Anthony, over to you kind of on the tech side. Yeah, and I think from a technology point of view, what we've seen is that acceleration of, of, of data, this digital ex acceleration as such, because all of a sudden um, the technology was certainly in place. But if you look at uh, Teams as an example, which is what we're doing this this over, um, Teams was not built already to scale to the uh, to the point of what it was challenged to last year. Zoom, in fact, had similar issues. So if you take these messaging apps and these these collaboration apps that were there, but not ready for the scale. But what they've been able to do is they've been able to accelerate their digital acceleration. They've been able to take their development and scale this to you know make sure that they can handle the load now. So that's a great example, but also from the point of view of you know people working from home, we have to understand that data is being created in many different areas now. So the challenge for IT teams is how do we manage that data? How do we make sure it's being backed up? And how do we protect against malicious intent? So you know that's, that's the big challenge challenges that have come out of it, but I believe that it's been a very good thing from a technology point of view because we have accelerated ourselves. Um, maybe what we would have seen come in five years or even 10 years, we see today and everyone's embracing that technology, which is great. So data management in a hybrid or a multi-cloud environment is a major challenge for most of the organizations. How is Veeam positioned to address this challenge and how do you differentiate from the competition? Yeah, so I'll start with the high level. I think I think we've always differentiated ourselves because of our ability to look forward uh, and, and also the, the strength in the products that we release to the market. So if we look at, uh, we were born in the virtualization phase, we don't have the legacy debt that comes with uh, where most of the comp you know, competitive landscape was born in, right? So if you're building on physical platforms, it was very different to when we were born in the, in the virtual virtualization stage. We knew very early that during that stage that cloud was going to be the next big wave and we've been working towards, you know, we have na native native protection for the three big cloud providers and continue to provide support for those. And then we also made the acquisition around Castum, which is really the Kubernetes piece, which is the next phase, right, after hybrid cloud. So our strategy has always been, it's not about so much the specific technologies, but what are the trends in which we see our customers looking ahead and saying, okay, these are the next new platforms or the next new waves of innovation that we're going to embrace and adopt. And we've been there acquiring or working with those technologies from a very early onset. So in, in some of our reference cases or the ones we use in, in, in APJ, some of our customers are looking to explore and then looking to Veeam on a Kubernetes side of the fence to say, hey, I want to go and explore this container view or, 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 or driving my technology that way, I feel comfortable because I have the ability to back that data up and, and feel confident around that. So I think it's more, our differentiation is we're simple, reliable, flexible, and we're always looking forward and, and integrating well with the, the next new sets of uh, technology waves. 
Yeah, and I think just to add to that, what underpins everything that Shiva was talking about was the fact that we have a true platform now that covers, you know, physical cloud, SaaS, applications and virtual. Um, the platform is very strong and allows people to basically almost cherry pick what they want in terms of protect. If they're running a cloud-based workload on AWS, they can install a very small footprint from the marketplace and back up their AWS workloads. But if that same customer has backups that are still on premises under VMware, they can then link the two through our Veeam backup and replication, our traditional platform, and then basically see the policies and the backups from the one console. Expanding that out, mobility, is 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 a, a mobility is critical in this sort of world as well. So our data format is self-descripting, which means it doesn't rely on any hardware. We're agnostic of the hardware, agnostic of any file system. So once you get a workload backed up with Veeam into that repository, that Veeam repository, it then becomes portable. That means you can right click and basically recover it. If it was a VMware machine, you can recover it to Hyper-V. You could do a restore to an EC2 instance in, a in AWS. So that's our benefit. And that's, I think, from a hybrid perspective, why we're set up beautifully to basically attack this you know, modern data platform world. So VM recently reported 25% growth in Q1 in 2021. Can you please talk about the highlights of the achievement and market expansion and the reasons behind the growth? What is the contribution from India? Yeah, great. Look, I think uh, here's how I would put it. I, I love these meetings when and the and luxury of working at Veeam is they're always quite good growth stories, right? So if I look at the APJ growth story, 27% year in year ARR, 120% bookings attainment across APJ. Every single geography that I look after as an independent geography made the plan and exceeded the plan significantly. The India business was rocking in Q1. Um, and it's set up quite well, right? So the only concern I have, and this is more a human one, is with the current conditions in India is just getting access to customers and the state of business. But if I look at where we sit from uh, engagement with customers, our partner landscape and our growth highlights, India is probably one of the shining lights, if not the shining lights of how we're driving expansion in the region. I think we're, we're, you know, we're the newer one into the marketplace in terms of time that we've spent in India from an investment. We're about number three and we have clear sights on moving to number one in, in market share in, in, in there. And under Sandeep and the team's leadership, I'm very, very confident around that. The other thing we saw was um, the switch to subscription or consumption from a subscription perspective. India was one of the fastest moving geographies to move to subscription licensing. And I think it's truly customers taking advantage of the Veeam universal licensing platform that we have, which is really unique to, I think it's really akin to tech companies that are like looking to drive technology innovation as quickly as possible. Like you said, growth is derived from a great platform, great products. And certainly in 2020, we managed to release 17 new products and, and, and updates, right? Which means that we're continually improving our product set, which in turn gives confidence to our customers to basically keep leveraging and buy more. It becomes almost like a flywheel to a certain extent um, with, with Veeam because we have a great foothold, we have some great customer base, but then we can build technology to then sell back into that customer base. But then for new markets, they see the uptake from the outside and say, well, look, let's take a look and see that technology, that technology, and, and let's put the platform to some use. So I think we can't, we're, we're kind of self-perpetuating in a way like that, but you can't have this level of success without the backing of a great technology platform, which is, like Shiva said, we've got this reliability, we've got the flexibility, um, and that's really what's important when we look at the Veeam technology stack. All right, thank you so much. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.